Hey guys, moments ago, Gearbox made a post talking about some patches and hotfixes that they're gonna be issuing today, and then also talking about some major features and changes that are coming to Borderlands 3. It's a pretty lengthy post, and I'm not gonna read all of it, but here it is right here. I'll have this link down in the description if you guys wanna read all of it. I'm just gonna be going over the highlights and some of the more exciting stuff that's coming. The first thing they talked about is the Bloody Harvest event that starts today. It's gonna to run from October 24th, which is today, and ending December 5th. They're going to do a micro patch, which is going to make this event go live. And the way that you're going to know that it's live is that the main menu will be all spooky and decked out in a Halloween theme. This micro patch for this event is going to go live by 3 p.m. Pacific time today. It might be a little bit earlier than that, but if you guys are wanting to get in on this, just check your main menu to know when it's live. The next thing they talked about were some general changes that they made. And on consoles, Mayhem Mode is now available in true Vault Hunter mode. And also on consoles, they've added the photo mode mode. And then lastly, they've added the Echo Cast Twitch extensions for Xbox and PlayStation as well. The last three items are for all platforms and they've added new Vault Hunter customizations and trinkets. So that's awesome. They've added the ability to specify mayhem mode while in matchmaking. And the last one is going to save my hearing. Thank you so much for fixing this. They've adjusted the volume of the 2K and Gearbox logo intro movies. There was only one change under the weapons list and that was to the flacker. They've made another change to it and they've corrected it so that now it only only consumes one ammo instead of five. I got a lot of emails from you guys concerned about this, so thank goodness they fixed it. One of the other interesting changes that they made is that they've increased the checkpoint sizes of new use stations in multiple locations. So I don't know what was going on there if some of them were just too small and hard to see. So those were just some of the interesting fixes that they're gonna be implementing today. And the next section talks about what they're gonna be doing in the future. They go on to say that we'd like to take this opportunity to outline our plans for future updates including some of the community's most frequently requested changes. And here's a look at some of the things we're working to implement in future patches. Performance and stability. Game performance and stability continue to be our top priorities. The first fruits of our labor will be released in our upcoming November patch with various improvements game-wide. Below this, they list all the new awesome changes and features that they're implementing, and it looks like, yeah, we'll be getting them in November. The first one I think everybody's gonna be very excited about, and it's changes to the banking system. It reads, expanding the bank has been the the most consistently requested feature by the community. We've heard you loud and clear and the groundwork for expanding the bank has already started. The first of several planned expansions will coincide with the release of Takedown at Malawan's Black Site. Expect a significant bank expansion that will more than double the existing space. Additional expansions to the bank will continue to be rolled out over future releases. So it sounds like the first bank expansion is going to give us at least 50 extra spaces because that would be doubling it because right now you can only hold 50. So maybe they're gonna put us a little over 100 for the first part. And then in addition to that, they're gonna keep expanding it. That is amazing. That's really great that they're doing that. And they're talking about the first expansion happening around the event of Malawan Takedown. And they did post a 2019 fall winter content calendar and Bloody Harvest is starting today. So it looks like the Malawan Takedown down will probably be in November, then followed up by DLC 1, which will be at the end of this year or maybe beginning of next. The next thing they talk about is really exciting. It's dedicated loot pools for bosses, and they're saying that several of you have stated a desire to find gear more easily in the game, which is true. Yeah, we're all wanting that. To do that, we are updating the loot pools, the data that determines what in-game items drop, to ensure that more specific gear drops from bosses. That means you'll be able to go to a specific boss to get a specific gear you're looking for. We're working out which bosses get which gear right now and expect this to be ready as a part of the November patch as well. I've seen a lot of people in the community talk about this. This is going to be an amazing change and make the gaming experience so much better. And it's amazing that they are listening to the community and making these really great changes. So it looks like the community does have a voice and they are definitely listening. The next one's pretty interesting. They're talking about character buffs. In the late stages of the game, when Mayhem Mode is active, we found that player companions Moses Iron Bear, Flax Pets, and Zane's Digi Clone Sentinel are not reportedly performing as well as we had expected. To address this, we're looking at how to adjust damage according to the relevant skills and gear. The goal here is to make sure that we have as many viable character builds as possible. The next one I'm really excited about it's additional mayhem levels in mayhem 2.0 they're saying that mayhem mode has been a fantastic addition which I totally agree to the borderlands world after receiving some great
great community feedback, we've been hard at work on a significant revamp that will introduce a host of improvements over several upcoming updates. The first update will be released as a part of the takedown at Malawan's black site, which sounds like November-ish, and will include the first new Mayhem mode level, Mayhem 4. That's amazing. I mean, that's really fast. They must be working pretty hard over there. They say to expect a significant challenge when it debuts with tougher enemies that reward players with highly synergized character builds. The next part's pretty exciting. They're saying a new batch of legendary gear will also only drop while in Mayhem 4 to reward those players who are truly up for the challenge. In the last part, they're saying in the future that they have plans to overhaul Mayhem mode with more UI support, new Mayhem modifiers that change gameplay more dramatically, Mayhem playlists, new rewards, and additional levels of Mayhem to work through. They say they're really excited about Mayhem 2.0, so am I, and that they will talk more about it whenever it gets closer to the release. This next one's pretty good. They are going to be adding new vending machines. It says, Marcus heard the outcry for more vending machines, so we're airdropping in some more across multiple maps. They're saying to expect new ammo and health vending machines outside of a few boss arenas and a few in some of the bigger environments. So like Athena's, yes, we need a vending machine outside of Captain Tron. Hopefully that's where they're going to be putting it on Atlas HQ. Yep, we need one outside of Katagawa. Electra City might be just, it's a large map, so they need more. Same with Jacob's Estates. That one definitely needs an additional one. Voracious Canopy, it might be, again, just a large area because there's a set of machines outside of Genevieve. But yeah, this is great. This is going to make farming those bosses a whole lot better. Unfortunately, though, bosses like General Tron that is on Desolation's Edge won't be getting vending machines. Another change they want to make is skippable cinematics, but they're saying it's a little bit tricky. They're going to work on it and see what they can do. The last thing is the return of the target dummy. They're going to add a target dummy to the shooting range on Sanctuary 3. They feel that this is the best location since the bank is also on the ship. This way, we will be able to manage and test our builds on Sanctuary 3 without having to travel anywhere else, and we can expect to see this implemented sometime in December. So this month, Month, next month and December are all going to be really exciting with a lot of really good changes for Borderlands 3. But I hope this helped you guys out and we'll see you next video. 